So let's look at marijuana pharmacology. Uh, and actually, believe it or not, even from this slide, which is not old, we actually, um, we actually see some changes here. We know that 400 compounds are, exist in marijuana, and then a lot of those compounds are not necessarily compounds that we, that, that we want or recommend in patients. We used to know about 60 different cannabinoids. Now we know that there are close to almost 100 different cannabinoids, and all of them have varying properties and slightly different chemical structures, slightly different chemical structures. And, and just a little hydroxylation um, can change the compound significantly. THC, probably the most well-known one of them all. Um, it's the potent psychoactive agent that uh, I think everyone knows about, and, and really the one that most people are concerned about, because they're concerned, hey, if, if uh, patients have a lot of THC, or just people, if they have a lot of THC in their product, um, it's psychoactive. Will they be able to think correctly? Will they be able to drive correctly? You know, will they be able to function cognitively, function correctly? Uh, and that's still a, a concern, uh, and it's going to be an ongoing concern because, because no matter what, this, the, these compounds, uh, we're not evolving as human beings overnight. So these compounds are still going to have some type of psychoactive component um, when you're looking at marijuana as a whole. Medical CBD is a little bit of a different animal, which, uh, which, which we'll sort of dive into in a little bit as well. Cannabidiol, so CBD is a precursor of THC. It blocks some of the excitatory effects of THC. It also is one of the compounds that has pretty much been well known for, uh, for, the, for the pain relieving com uh, components. Um, and as you, as you probably know, there is over-the-counter CBD that's available which uh, we found in some cases helps patients with pain, but in other cases it doesn't actually work. And one of the reasons it doesn't work is because it doesn't have the right balance between CBD and THC, let's say, or it doesn't have the right terpenes, or the administration is not the exact one that we want. Um, so there are a variety of reasons. Uh, CBN, a degradation product, THC also, uh, can block some of the excitatory effects of THC. Uh, there are some non-cannabinoid uh, constituents that are in marijuana that are similar to those that are actually found in tobacco. So again, compounds that we, we don't necessarily think are really beneficial from a medical standpoint. And in some cases, you could argue maybe they're, they're more harmful than beneficial. Uh, all the more reason why at least the medical cannabis that we have in Illinois, um, we don't see those compounds in there. Those compounds are removed. How do you get medical cannabis in Illinois? You know, what are the different uh, routes of delivery? I think this has probably been covered before, and most of you already know this, but there are multiple routes of delivery. So there are oils, there are tinctures, there are topicals uh, that are available. There are pills or edibles that are available. There are suppositories uh, that, are, uh, that are available. Um, there are ointments and lotions that are available. All of them exert different properties, okay? Just like any other medication would. You know, you have medications that are available in different uh, routes of delivery. Those different routes of delivery offer different relief based on, on the route. Some are quicker, some are slower. Sometimes you want it to be slower, sometimes you want it to be quicker. Sometimes you want it to last longer, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you want it to be localized, sometimes you don't. So routes of administration uh, are really important. And, uh, you know, so if you have a patient that goes to uh, a dispensary, if you go to a dispensary and, and you try a certain product, again, it may have a variety of different um, percentages of different compounds in that product, but the route of administration may make a huge uh, uh, difference in terms of outcomes. So let's talk about safety of medical cannabis. We, we all know that uh, directly from medical cannabis, I mean, unless someone really wanted to kill themselves, like maybe they, they um, you know, uh, took uh, what, what we consider to be potentially a lethal dose of cannabis, uh, if they really wanted to, there have been no known deaths from cannabis uh, when, uh, when the intent was not death. Um, and that's important to, to, to recognize because we don't see that same safety record with a lot of legal, over-the-counter things that are out there. Um, so what we usually see is that patients will fall asleep before they can even get to that lethal dose. Uh, so, right? So unle unless someone literally wanted to kill themselves by, you know, taking... Um, an incredible large portion and, and, and doing something really, really not so smart with it. It's really pretty hard to, um, um, to kill yourself with, with medical cannabis.